Hi, brothers and sisters of the Price Creek Ward. Hope to be able to take just a second and, and visit with you all for a minute. Uh, we've had a really interesting couple of weeks, haven't we? Where we found ourselves in a little bit of a different world with some uh, challenges and, and uh, uh, hardships. And some people are going through um, some very fearful experiences and others are watching and wondering the severity of it. But either way, uh, no matter what, we're all impacted right now by this new world. We've not been together for several weeks. We've not been able to interact as a family like we would want to. And we've been able to have the spirit in our homes and be able to continue to serve the Lord. Um, but it's been different. Uh, I'm grateful that we have a church that is the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. That is led by Jesus Christ himself through a prophet, seer, and revelator, President Nelson, and a quorum of the Twelve Apostles that are still directing and leading and guiding us. I assure you that President Henson, our state president, is doing a wonderful job administering to and ministering for on behalf of our state. We are being led by wonderful individuals who are seeking uh, the direction from not only our inspired leaders, but also from the Lord. We are worried a bit that maybe some of us become disconnected, that we become disconnected to the Savior, Jesus Christ, that we become disconnected to each other as a ward family, or even feel themselves become more isolated and disconnected with the world, and being more alone in their home. We want to remind you that the Savior, Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior, has not disconnected from us. We want to remind you that we are a family. The Price Creek Ward is a family being led and met still using digital technology and remote gathering, being led and interacted with by a ward council that they love and, and pray for you. We have a wonderful Elders Quorum President, Police Society President, and other officers that are actively working to make sure our ward is took care of as not only an individual, but in classes, quorums, groups, and societies. I am grateful that we have been instructed to implement the sacrament at least monthly to assist in that. But I wanna remind you that if for some reason you've been unable to take the sacrament, the Savior remembers the last time you took the sacrament, however long ago that was. And your love for him and your connection to him is I assure you that as you and I do all that we can to renew our covenants with the Savior using prayer and our faith, that we will feel the connection with the Savior and the baptismal covenants we've had with him. Now we've been privileged and instructed how to implement the sacrament. We have met with and worked with our elders from presidency. They have been able to go through and take all the names that they could create a, a reachable, very small group that could go out and work to minister and administer the sacrament to the members of the ward. If you were somebody who was contacted and felt uncomfortable due to health concerns to not have a sacrament being administered, that is a very appropriate. And we want to remind you that it's not necessary that you take the sacrament right now. The Savior still values and, and reconfirms your covenant with him. And we don't want to create increased health concerns by the sacrament process. We've instructed those that do implement and administer the sacrament ways to do it that would hopefully create the most uh, clean and, and safest way to do so. Um, President Beatonball with his two counselors and secretary have reached out to everyone that has an assignment to administer the sacrament outside of their home and to individual wards and board members. If you did not receive a phone call to have the sacrament administered to your individual self or family that you might need help, help with, would you please contact President Beatonball and visit with him about who might have been assigned to, to your area or to your home? We have asked that and have been asked not to have the sacrament in large groups. 
even if I have a large family around me, the large family is being asked not to gather, that it could increase potential risks. As you know, we've been asked about 10 people would be gathered into a setting or somewhere in that range. So we'd ask and invite you, even though you might have neighbors nearby and so forth, to be cautious with that and, and not um, put yourself at risk, even though it might not seem like there is a problem. Again, if you want the sacrament and it's not been in, in, um, contacted to you to, to have it, please reach out to President Beatonball. His number's on our tools and you can reach out to him and he'd be more than glad to make sure that something happens for you. Um, in addition, those that would like to administer the sacrament in their home, as a reminder, if you would just reach out to me and let me know that that's a desire that you have, that I can work with you on that. Remember, we were asked not to give out a blanket statement approving everyone to administer sacrament who might have authority, but rather to go case by case, one by one. And it reminded me of what Elder Bednar had taught recently when he was in our area, that we don't act upon anyone, but we rather allow them to act for themselves. So by you texting or calling or emailing or whatever you like to visit me on, the ability to administer the sacrament in your homes, it just allows you to unlock the power of heaven and allows the keys to enable and enable the rights for you to do that. And so we just continue to invite that. Once authorized and approved, that authorization is good and to the duration of this experience. And the last just a couple of seconds, I wanted to share with you an experience that I had in the scriptures this week. We were going through and studying Jacob 5, and in verse 70 it says this, And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard sent his servants, and the servant went and did as the Lord had commanded him, and brought other servants, and they were few. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto them, Go to and labor in the vineyard with your might. For behold, this is the last time that I shall nourish my vineyard. For the end is nigh at hand, and the season speedily cometh, and if ye labor with your might, with me, ye shall have joy in the fruit which I shall lay up against myself, against the time which shall soon come. Brothers and sisters, we have been asked to labor with our might, with the Savior, to reach out to all the sons and daughters of God around us, whether it be our family or our friends, whomever it might be, using FaceTime or Google Hangouts, using texts or messaging features, emailing or sending cards or letters, would you please reach out to people in our ward, people that are members or not, and remind them that they're not alone. Remind them the Savior is not disconnected from them. Remind them that they are loved by you and so many more, that they are not alone, despite how they may feel so. Would you please, with all of your heart, seek the revelation that will come in that process? President Nelson taught us this, he said, the Lord God gave us a generous invitation. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. This timeless offer to provide personal revelation is extended to all of his children. It almost sounds too good to be true, but it is true. I have received and responded that heavenly help, and I have learned that I almost need to be ready, that I always need to be ready to receive it, end quote. Brothers and sisters, would you please this week be prayerful and seek out personal revelation of whom you can reach out to, whether they be on your ministering lists or whether they be members of our ward or non-members, whomever, would you please approach the Lord and ask for impressions of whom to reach out to this week that they feel connected with others and remind them of the love that Jesus Christ has for all of his sons and daughters. I have been often this week thinking about the fear that some people are experiencing quite a bit. And, and yet I reminded that we've been taught that where fear exists, faith cannot. Brothers and sisters, I don't know how we're going to handle some of the things that are headed our direction. I'm not sure for those homes who've lost jobs and wages, how we're going to pay bills. 
for those homes that are struggling. I'm not sure how we're gonna do it, but I know we're gonna do it. I know that we're always gonna have the help of the Lord to give us revelation, personal revelation, to know how to handle the things that come into our lives. I know that the Savior is as concerned for the things that I worry about as I am. I know that Heavenly Father worries about the things that I worry about. Not that the insignificance of the mortal worry is, is trivial, but it's because I am his son and you are his son or daughter. And because he loves us as a perfect parent does, he worries with us, he worries for us. And if we'll ask and we'll listen, the Lord will tell us how to handle it. I promise you that the Savior, Jesus Christ, gives us the blessing of peace. I also would remind you that the adversary promotes and dispels and issues a great degree of fear. Where fear exists, faith in Jesus Christ cannot have the influence it can May we have faith in Christ right now. May we know that he'll help us through all of our times and challenges. May we be reminded of that beautiful passage in Psalms 4610. Be still and know that I am God. What a great chance right now to be still and deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ and our Father which art in heaven. Brothers and sisters, we love you. Would you please reach out and let us know if there's anything we can do to assist you. If you become ill or any concerns happen that we can assist you with, either way, please let us know. Sister Markham, our Relief Society President, and President Beaton Ball, our Elders Quorum President, are actively and anxiously engaged in the work right now. Please let them know how you're doing through those that, you're, that are assigned to minister to you. Whether you've been contacted or not, know that we love you and are ready to be there for you if you need any assistance. Please let President Beatonball and Sister Markham know if there's anything we can do to help you this time. We will continue to administer those blessings of the gospel of Jesus Christ and our Lord. We love you and thank you for all of your prayers and invite you to continue to, to press forward this week, that we may have continued love in the Savior as we study his word this week and come follow me in the book of Enos. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.